um, the love that he has for you and what will cure all your diseases. It will solve all your money problems. Hallelujah. It will solve every situation in your life that's not meant to be by God. Just get a revelation. Hallelujah. It's easy. Just get a revelation of on him. God, you know what? I heard, you know, there's a song that says, Life is hard, but God is good. Okay? And he is so good. And you know, life can have its challenges, but you got to serve a, a, a living God. You serve a true God. You, you serve a lot of God that lives within you. Hallelujah. No God on this earth. Hallelujah. I don't know who God, whatever God they have out there, they don't, they, they never, they, for one, no, no God out there has ever sacrificed his life for anybody. Hallelujah. No false God, and no God can to him well. Hallelujah. In us, except one of oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior we have. Hallelujah. Today we are going to be in the book of Acts, the, two, the third chapter. Acts 3. Praise Jesus. I'm so happy to see all your happy faces here. I'm we all just happy today. Hallelujah. Are you feel us happy today? God. God bless you. God bless you. Corinthians 3, um, 
yeah, no, to uh, verse 4, and it says, and my speech, and this is the, the, the top of Paul speaking, right? It says, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and, and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so, you know, when I read that, it just kind of, you know, jumped up and hit me, okay? The Apostle Paul said that what our faith is not to be in men, it's to be in what? In the power of God. People of God, there's a power out there that is able, hallelujah. There's a, there's a power out there that you should have faith in, okay? Um, we sometimes we don't know what to have faith in, but the Bible says we are to have faith in the power of God and His ability, hallelujah, to help you and His ability to deliver you and His ability to provide for you, praise God, right? So there's a power out there. And so the title of my message today is Where God's Power Flows. Where God's Power Flows, okay? And so I want to talk about, uh, based on the story that we read in, in, in the book of Acts, because we know if you read the story that it's all about God's power. Okay, somebody got healed and delivered right that day, and it was because of what? Of the power of God. And so you know there was there was the environment was set there for the power of God to flow. So let's talk a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about what environment. What what environment causes God's power to flow? Okay, we need to know that, right? Praise God. We want some things. Somebody wants something in their life. Hallelujah. Somebody wants something. How many of you are praying for something? Hallelujah. How many of you need a healing? You need money. You need deliverance. You need a job. You need a car. You need a house. You need something out there that you need. Hallelujah. Praise God. We need the power of God to flow in our lives. Right? Praise God. So I want to talk about four of them. The first one is God's power flows where there is a need. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So here is a man who was laying from his mother's whom he had never walked, okay? He couldn't even walk on crutches. He had to be carried, okay? He's, he's a lame man, and, uh, and, 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 you know, how many of you know that this man had a need, okay? He had, you know, people had to pick him up and take him where he needed to go. He was kind of maybe a burden on some family members and some other people, right? Um, you know, and, and not only that, he was not even allowed to go in the church house because, you know, he was blemished. He, he, he was lame, you know, if you were lame and blemished, you really weren't allowed to go into the church house. So not only is he is he lame physically, but he's also a spiritually lame. He's not getting fed, hallelujah. You know, he doesn't know that there's a power that exists out there to heal him. How could he? And so here there was, a, you know, this man had a need. He had a spiritual need. He had a physical need. And on top of that, he was broke. Amen, Pastor. That sounds familiar. <laughs> Don't claim that one. <laughs> he was broke. He didn't have any money. He had no means of providing for himself, okay? And so the first uh, uh, thing was there was a need. How many of you there was a need in this man's life, right? Christ God, there was a need. The second one is God's power flows where there is expectancy, okay? Now, the scripture that we just said, that uh, Brad just said that he was expecting to receive something from Peter and John, right? Now, he wasn't expecting a healing, okay? He was expecting what? Well, money. He was expecting money. But how many of you know that sometimes the thing that we think we need is not the thing that we really need? Okay? Well, sometimes we think we need something, and God's like, no, that's not what you need. You know, praise God that he knows what we really need. He knew what this man needed. This man didn't need a, a money. He needed a healing. Hallelujah. He needed something that wasn't just going to provide for him for that day. He needed to be provided for for the rest of his life. He needed something deeper than what he was expecting. Praise God. But he still had a spirit of expectancy. Praise God. Didn't he? Did he not have a spirit of expectancy? Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Okay. Then the number three was God's power flows where there is faith. Oh, God's power flows where there is faith. People, God, the Bible says without faith you can't please Him. If you can't please Him, Hallelujah, you probably can't get the thing that you want. Hallelujah, praise God. So, how many of you know that there needs to be faith for God's power to flow? Okay. You know when he, when Peter, we just read when Peter grabbed the man's hand. Okay, the man had a choice. There's, you know, we always have a choice. That man had a choice, right? He could have pulled back and said, uh-uh. You know what? Well, you can't heal me. You know, I, 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 I kind of like my place here. And you know what? We see.
see that so many times. He, he, I don't want to get healed, and I won't get my disability check no more if I get healed. <laughs> you know, praise God. If I get healed and I won't get all this attention from people, if I don't get healed, you know, I can't go see my doctor, I can't find him. He pays attention to me. He gets the medication because he's healed with him. Right? So this man had a choice. He he had a choice. And you know, and he could have said no, but he didn't. And and the Bible is replete with situations of people who had a choice. Okay? The woman with the issue of blood, she had a choice. You know, she could have lived with that thing forever until it killed her. But she said no to it. Hallelujah, right? Blind Bartimaeus had a choice. You know, he could have said, well, I'm just going to stay blind. That's the way I was born. That's just the way it is. I'll just be a beggar all my life. Somebody's got to take care of me. No, no, but he said no to that. He said, no, we had a choice. Hallelujah. So many people in life have a choice. Right? We have a choice. And this man, thank God, he, he had a choice and he took the right one. He said yes to his healing. You know, the scripture says that not only did he get up, the scripture says that he leaped up. It says here that he stood up and he walked. And he entered the church house. Hallelujah. He entered the temple. This lay broke. <laughs> Helpless. Spiritually dry man had some faith. And he demonstrated it by his leap of faith. Hallelujah. So to speak, right? He took a leap of faith. He jumped up. And what did he do? He grabbed on to that healing. He grabbed on to that thing that God wanted him to have. People of God. Hallelujah. He said yes to it. It takes faith for the power of God to flow. Number four. God's power flows where there where the glory is given to him. God's power flows where the glory is given to him. People of God, we were created to glorify him. You know, and verse 8 says that the man was leaping. We read it here. He was walking. He was leaping. And uh, verse 8, it says he was praising who? God Almighty. He wasn't praising John. He wasn't praising Peter. He wasn't praising the Pharisees. He was bringing and praying to who it belonged to. And that was God Almighty. God was the one that he healed him. And then in 9 says, uh, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. He wasn't embarrassed about it. He wasn't ashamed. He was praising God outwardly. And that's what we are meant to do. Praise God outwardly, hallelujah. He gave all the praise and the glory to God Almighty. So, just to repeat and recap, God's power flows where there is a need. God's power flows where there is expectancy. God's power flows where there is faith. And God's power flows where the glory is given to him. And all of these elements were here in this situation. And the God, man, got his healing. Praise God. Now, I want to look at, 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 at this story from a different perspective. Okay? I want to look at it from a, a perspective, not so much of the man, because sometimes we read stories in the Bible, and we want to put ourselves with the person who's sick. We want to we, we, we want to put ourselves in that situation where, oh, that's me. You know, that he's sick, I'm sick. Oh, oh that, one, that woman, she's broke, and I'm broke. And, 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 you know, that, that man, he, he's demon possessed. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Don't claim that one. Don't claim that one. Hallelujah. Okay? But I want to look at it from Peter's perspective. Because after all, are you and I not men and women who are trying to be more and more like our Savior? Are we not men and women who, gotta, who want to get away from drinking the milk and eating the meat like the Bible says? Don't we want to be spiritual giants? Don't we want to be the ones laying hands on the sick and seeing them delivered instead of everybody always having to lay hands on us? Don't we want to be the ones to be encouraging somebody who's down and out instead of always having to be encouraged? You don't want to get there, people. Do you want to get there? Hallelujah. You know, you may not be there right now. Hallelujah. But I'm going to take you there through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you how to get there. Hallelujah. God's going to teach me and you some things today. Praise God. So I want to look at this uh, uh, from the perspective of Peter. You know, we want to look at the Bible. And, you know, I don't want to always be the woman with the issue of blood. I don't want to always be, you know, blind Bartimaeus. I don't want to be the woman 
who ran out of oil. I want to be uh, Jesus, like Jesus. And I want to be like Peter. And I want to be the Paul in the story. And I want to be the Silas and the Philip and the Elijah and the Elijah and the Queen Esther in the story. Hallelujah. How about you? Amen. How about you? Hallelujah. Okay, let's go there then. Hallelujah. You ready? So God's power flows where there's a need. Okay, let's look at it from Peter's perspective. Did Peter have a need? Did he have a need? Listen to me. Peter, a man who was taken out of, out of uh, uh, being a fisher of fish, <laughs> a fisherman, to walk with God Almighty for over three years. Peter, witnessing, witnessing miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. Peter, who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter saw with his own eyes Jesus ascending up to heaven. Uh, Peter was full with Jesus, and Jesus gave him, directly gave him the calling for his life. Peter experienced the indwelling of the Holy Spirit up in the upper room and, 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 and prayed in tongues and experienced the power. Do you think Peter had a had need? What was Peter lacking? Opportunity. The opportunity to show God's power and his love for the people. Peter's need was to demonstrate the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Was that need fulfilled in this story? Yeah. We got to, 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 to reach out and give somebody here through the power of the Holy Spirit working in the Hallelujah. Isn't that what we want to have for To take a moment to pray for somebody and see who they feel. To, aid, to be able, because we stand on God's word about our prosperity and we stand on God's word about, about finances, to be able to take a little bit of money and give it to somebody who's in need instead of us always being the ones who receive. Do we have that need in our body? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. We're just like Peter. Number two, that's from the Peter's perspective. God's power flows when there is expectancy. Was Peter expecting this miracle? Was he expecting it to happen? Do you think? Yeah. If he wasn't expecting it, he wouldn't have spoken the word. He wouldn't reach out. See, Peter, well, he, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He, he had to be He had to release that power. And when he saw that man that, that uh, was lame, couldn't even look at him in the eye, full of full of shame, he saw him and he saw that there was a need there for him. And he said, uh, and he had to, he, he reached out and, and expectantly and said, yes, yes, that's it, God. That's it. That's what I'm here to do. That's what my calling is. Hallelujah. And I'm expecting it to happen. And he laid hands on, he grabbed that man, and hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, what he expected to happen, happened. And people are not, you and I, when we pray for somebody, when we go, when we see a need, we, we have to expect that because we're believing that we're going to to fulfill it, that God will fulfill it through us. Hallelujah. hallelujah. we got to expect that we can be used of God mightily. People are God, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. He resides in you. The most powerful being that has ever existed, the creator of the heavens and the, and the earth, the one who sustains the universe is, 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 is. hallelujah, dwells inside of you.
and we have to back it up with some action because not only the word, because the word says that without faith it's impossible to please God. The word also says that faith without works is dead. Amen. You want to activate your faith? Don't just say the word to the So what did you, what did Peter do say? He spoke the word and then he reached out to the man. Hallelujah. People got speak the word. I got that job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, Father God. I go to this interview and I got that job. Hallelujah. And then go to the interview. Praise <laughs> God. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 praise God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I, I, you know, I need a car, Father God. You, 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 know, you know, I didn't get to work, Father God. I'm believing. I knew that you're going to get me a car, Father God. I stand on your word that, by, that, that you provide all my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for that car, Holy God. And then go on my side of this for some cars. Hallelujah. You got to put some action to it, people. You got to put some action to it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Faith without works is dead. He had the faith and he followed it up. He demonstrated it by his action. Right? Praise God. Did I lose you all? Oh, no. I don't know. I wanted to say the word. I don't want to have to do nothing. You know what? True faith will cause you to take action. Amen. True faith will call. I've seen it in my life when I'm really believing that God's going to do something. Yes. I get up and I do what I need to do to think, bring that thing to pass. Hallelujah. Hey. Praise God. I can't, you know, look up my dishes and just, you know, pray they be done and then, and, you know, they don't get done, get up and get up and do them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Number four. The final one. God's power flows where the glory is given. Hallelujah. Now, did Peter give glory? Did Peter and John give glory to God? Oh, yeah, you better believe it. They give all the glory to God. Look at it, verse 12 and 13. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people of men of Israel. Why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look and tell me at us? Why are you looking at me? I didn't do it. Okay, as though by the power, our power, or godliness, we have made this man walk. What, what is he saying there? It wasn't my power. And it wasn't my goody goody works. Oh, I'm religious. So they have to get you. No. Oh. I read my Bible this morning, so I, you know, I got to lay hands on somebody and see them do it. No. Oh. Hallelujah. Because of the power that dwells inside of you, and you know that there's a mighty power dwelling inside yeah. of you. And it has to come yeah. forth. Praise God. It has oh, to come forth. Yeah. It has to do what it, what, what it does. Hallelujah. The great I am is the great I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Okay? And so he keeps on Look at number 16. And his name, talking about Jesus. Jesus, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Whom you see and know. Hallelujah. In other words, it was the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That brought this man to deliverance. That gave him his deliverance. Hallelujah. That healed him from that disease that had been that had been destroying his life from the day of birth. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. And they gave the glory to God. And people of God, for me and you, it's all about giving God glory. I can't even open my mouth to speak the name of Jesus without the power of God. I can't even say Jesus is my Lord without God Almighty uh, giving me that power. And I give him all the glory for everything. You see this little thing right here that I use to put my Bible to, you know, to, to, to keep my pages on my cast. Thank you, Jesus. If it was not for you, I would not have this little thing. People that we need to know how to start praising him for the big things and praise him for the small little things. Hallelujah. He, you know, he, you breathe because he puts that breath in you. Hallelujah. Everything you have is because he created it and he has completed it for you. Hallelujah. You got an ugly mouth on today. I ain't talking about it in here. I gave you the ugly mouth. Thank you for that. And now I'm going to give you a few mouths. Hallelujah. I'm just joking with us. At least I'm kind of laughing at her mother. Chill, I love your blouse, honey. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Praise God. You know what? If your car is in the best, you know that you leave the mouth very right half, half down the street. <laughs> and somebody got to push you to church. So what? Hallelujah. I can't. Hallelujah. He will give you better. He will give you better. He will. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, praise God. I can try to laugh at that. Uh, don't 
you laughing at the cow? No, she said that was my car too. Oh, yeah. But I come up with the power of God is in here, hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, hallelujah. You know what, people are done. I'm done. I ain't got nothing else to say. Holy Spirit, you got anything else to say? God has called you to the mighty power in the Bible says, okay? And it's time for us not just to be always be hey, if you need something and our people pray for you today, hallelujah. We're here for you. We're here to pray for you. We need healing. We're here to have financial difficulties. We're here to try to help you with those. We're here to help you to be encouraged today, hallelujah. Because all of us need that at one time. There's some time we have to all that stuff too, hallelujah. But it's a time, hallelujah, for you to get, you know, get off the mill. Get out to the meat, and you know what? That's not that God and the power that God can use you. Hallelujah. Even it's just to pray. You know, you may think, well, I can't, you know, I can't, you know, lay hands on somebody and see them healed. You know, you know, don't stop it. You know, don't, don't. I remember uh, reading a, a book. I can't remember who the pastor was. He said he used to get so discouraged because he would pray for people and they wouldn't get healed. And he said the Holy Spirit says, you don't stop the cancer. You know, yeah. lay hands on somebody's little cut, a paper cut first. <laughs> right? You know what? Let's not try to graduate if that's how we're feeling, okay? Praise God. But if you feel like you can lay somebody hands on somebody who has cancer and, and see that person receive your healing, and you know what? I'm going to tell you, even if that person doesn't get healed, that prayer will do something good for that person. Amen. It will do something good for that person. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we pray for one thing, and God said, no, I'm praying for something. You know, that's why I lay hands on people. I pray in tongues and I let God take over. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, I, for the second time, I'm done. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you. We glorify you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that. There's power, Father God, even in this church house and in our lives, Father God. There's power.